After Homo sapiens started migrating around 60,000 years ago, they rapidly expanded across Eurasia. Evidence from fossils and ancient genomes suggests that groups related to present-day East Asians were present in eastern China as early as 40,000 years ago. Two main routes for this dispersal have been proposed, either from the northern or southern parts of the Himalayas. Genetic studies of modern humans have supported the southern route as the origin of East Asian populations. However, the archaeological record provides strong evidence for the northern route as the origin of human activity in the Japanese archipelago, located at the eastern end of the Eurasian continent. The oldest use of upper Paleolithic stone tools in Japan dates back 38,000 years, and microblades likely originating from the Lake Baikal region in Siberia have been found in northern Japan, Hokkaido about 25,000 years ago, and the main Japanese island, Honshu, about 20,000 years ago. The Jomon culture in Japan, which lasted over 16,000 years, was characterized by a hunter-fisher-gatherer lifestyle with some of the earliest pottery in the world. This culture lasted until a start of rice cultivation, which brought by people migrated from the Eurasian continent, plausibly through the Korean peninsula, to northern parts of Kyushu Island in the Japanese archipelago. Several lines of evidence suggest the Jomon people were direct descendants of the Upper Paleolithic people, who remained isolated in the Japanese archipelago until the end of the last glacial maximum. Therefore, studying the ancient genomes of the Jomon people can provide new insights into the origin and migration history of East Asian populations. A major challenge for studying ancient genomes from the Japanese archipelago is the poor DNA preservation due to the warm and humid climate. Except for the northernmost island of Hokkaido and the acidic soils from the volcanic islands, though two Jomon individuals from Hokkaido dating back 3,500 to 3,800 years were recently sequenced with good coverage, a 3,000-year-old Jomon individual from northeastern Honshu had very limited genome coverage due to poor preservation. To better understand the origin of the Jomon people, scientists sequenced the genome of a 2,500-year-old Jomon individual, IK002, from central Honshu. Comparing this IK002 genome to ancient Southeast Asians, scientists previously found genetic similarities, suggesting the Jomon lineage may have a southern origin. However, key questions remain were the Jomon direct descendants of the Upper Paleolithic people who first migrated to the Japanese archipelago? And do the Jomon and present-day East Asians share ancestry with people who took the northern migration route? Initially, scientists extracted DNA from 12 individuals associated with the Jomon culture. However, for 10 of them, less than 1% of the DNA was usable because it wasn't well preserved. Only two individuals, IK002 and HG02, had more than 1% well preserved DNA. From those two, the 2,500 years old IK002 was selected for whole genome sequencing. IK002 was assigned to the rare mitochondrial haplogroup N9B1, which is common among the Jomon people but rare in present day Japanese. The genetic sex estimation of this individual as female is consistent with the morphological assessment. Scientific analysis found that she sat in between present-day East Asians and a cluster of ancient Hoabinian hunter-gatherers and the Upper Paleolithic individual from Tianyuan Cave. When using a smaller number of SNPs, including the present-day Ainu from Hokkaido, she clustered with the Hokkaido Ainu, supporting previous findings that the Hokkaido Ainu are direct descendants of the Jomon people. These results indicate that she is genetically distinct from present-day people in East Eurasia or even in Japan, with the exception of the Hokkaido Ainu. The researchers then carried out model-based unsupervised clustering using admixture, which showed that she has a unique ancestral component that is most prevalent in the Hokkaido Ainu. This component is also shared with present-day Honshu Japanese and Ulchi 9.8% and 6% respectively. The researchers further used Alder to date the timing of admixture in populations with Jomon ancestry. Researchers then used her and the Hokkaido Jomon as a source for Jomon ancestry and present-day Han Chinese as a source for mainland East Asian ancestry. 
they estimated the admixture in present-day Honshu Japanese to be between 1700 to 2200 years ago, which is slightly earlier than previous estimates but more consistent with the archaeological record. For the Ulchi, they estimated a more recent admixture timing, 31 to 47 generations ago, and for the Hokkaido Ainu, they detected even more recent admixture, 17 to 25 generations ago, likely due to ongoing gene flow between the Hokkaido Ainu and Honshu Japanese. To further explore the deep relationships between the Jomun and other Eurasian populations, the researchers used tremix to reconstruct admixture graphs. The study found that she is genetically related to and diverged from the common ancestor of modern East Asians, Northeast Asians and Native Americans. This divergence likely happened before the split between the East Asian lineage and the Northeast Asian and Native American lineage, which was estimated to have occurred around 26,000 years ago. This supports a scenario in which her ancestors arrived through the southern route and migrated from Southeast Asia toward Northeast Asia. However, Native Americans also have a high genetic contribution from the Upper Paleolithic, indicating they are admixed between the southern and northern routes. Overall, the tree mix results support the hypothesis that she is a direct descendant of the people who brought the Upper Paleolithic stone tools 38,000 years ago into the Japanese archipelago. Taking advantage of the earliest divergence of her lineage, the researchers investigated whether the Upper Paleolithic people who took the northern route through the Himalayas to reach East Eurasia made genetic contributions to populations that migrated from Southeast Asia. Researchers tested gene flow to other ancient and present-day East Asians and East Siberians using different methods. One method showed results consistent with previous findings on the prevalence of Native American ancestry in present-day East Siberians while none of the East Asian populations showed a significant genetic connection with Upper Paleolithic people who took the northern route. Thus, the study find no evidence that people from the northern migration route contributed genetically to the populations in Southeast Asia and East Asia, including the Jomon people represented by IK002. However, F4 statistics showed that Japanese present-day Taiwan Aborigines, Ami and Atayal, as well as populations from the Okhotsk Primarai region, Ulchi and Nivk, showed a significant excess of allele sharing with her. This suggests the presence of Ikawazu Jomon related ancestry in present day coastal populations in East Asia. Admixture graph modeling showed that excluding her from the genetic models leads to poor results for Japanese Devil's Gate Cave and Ami populations, but not for inland groups like the Han. The best fit models showed her contributions of 8%, 4%, and 41% into Japanese Devil's Gate Cave and Ami, respectively. In short, we can say that this study analyzes the whole genome sequence data of this ancient female individual to shed light on the origins of present-day East Asians. These results support the archaeological evidence that the Jomon are direct descendants of the Upper Paleolithic people, who started living in the Japanese archipelago 38,000 years ago. The study of her genome provides new insights into the migration route from south to north in East Eurasia. The F4 statistics suggest that both the ancient and the present-day East Asians are genetically closer to her than to Chokopani, ancient Tibetans, in the coastal region, but not in the inland region. This extra genetic affinity to her is unlikely to be due to recent gene flow as there is little cultural influence from ancestral Austronesians to the Ryukyu Islands in the last 10,000 years. Scientists propose two possible explanations for this signal. First, the earliest wave of migration from south to north occurred through the coastal region. Second, the migration occurred in both the coastal and inland regions, but the genetic components of the earliest wave were replaced by back migration from north to south in the inland region. However, more ancient genome data is still needed to fully understand the peopling history of East Eurasia. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.